Okay, so this video is about those first few days when your body is putting out colostrum, but you and baby are still trying to figure each other out. And so you may not feel confident that they're latching, that they're getting a good meal, that they're getting that fluid from you. Um, it is your immune system that you are passing on to them. So we do want them to get colostrum, not just for food, but for immunity purposes. Um, but that can also just mean that moms feel really stressed out. Oh my goodness, I'm not doing it right. And is my baby suffering as a result? Well, no, <laughs> let's put that to rest. I'll share an article that I found that uh, might help you feel a little bit better about it. Just, uh, it was an unfortunate circumstance. There was an earthquake in Mexico that caused the hospital to collapse. When enough days go by and rescuers are searching for the people trapped, you lose hope just knowing that enough days without food or water, people pass away. It's about body recovery at that point. Well, they were getting towards the maternity section. Nobody wanted to be the recovery team working in that area. It would have been just awful. But instead, at that time when they figured, you know, nobody will have survived, all of the babies that were in the little nursery section, because it was a time when they still used to take babies away and put them in that central nursery, all the babies survived. And reason for it, well, God in his wisdom gave babies resources to stay in their body, um, to sustain them through those first couple of days when mom and baby are figuring each other out. And in that case, it saved those babies' lives because they had internal reserves. While you guys are figuring each other out, your baby might feel hunger, might feel discomfort, um, might feel frustration. <laughs> um, mainly that just comes from the fact that when they were inside your body, they had none of those problems. And so it's just new and they're processing this experience, but your baby is not suffering in the sense that we often think they're suffering. Um, they have the internal resources to sustain them during that time that mom and baby are getting settled in. So it's all good. Um, now we do want to try and get that colostrum into them rather than just sustaining them with other fluids. If we start giving them formula or giving them other things, um, well, it does keep them hydrated and fed. We do miss an opportunity to pass on our immune system. So the resources I'm about to share with you support feeding them, starting your breastfeeding journey off on a good foot and getting your immune system passed on to your child. So here are a couple of tricks for you. Very first thing, learn how to hand express, learn how to self express fluids from your own body. Um, there are some great videos I benefited from. You can just uh, type that into the Google search or into the YouTube search, lots of videos out there. Please do not be intimidated. The one that I saw that was most educational, but also kind of intimidating at the time was a very large breasted woman who had an incredible milk output. Um, please do not be intimidated by anybody's breast size. Don't be intimidated by how much their body puts out. Remember in those first few days, your body is kicking out just the tiniest little bits of fluid because your kid's stomach is the size of a chickpea. It's tiny, it takes a few drops for that stomach to be filled, okay? Your body knows that. So you don't have to be pushing out huge amounts of liquid, um, but if you learn how to self-express, then you are able to remove that liquid on your own if needed. This also means once you've nailed down that particular uh, technique, you will never need a breast pump, okay? You can still buy one if you want one, but you will never need one because you know how to get milk and colostrum out of your own body. It's amazing gives you a ton of peace, especially if you're going, oh my goodness, you know, I forgot my breast pump at home or no, you're not reliant on an external tool. So if you know how to hand express, here are some things you're able to do. Number one, squeeze the colostrum so that it's sitting on the nipple and then put baby on because even as they're practicing latching, because the colostrum is on the outside of your body, it's getting into their mouth and so their body is able to make use of it. So you're able to just do a little gentle squeeze, practice latching, okay, do a gentle squeeze, practice latching and with each of those practice uh, opportunities they're also being fed. Another thing that you can do is if you are self-expressing the colostrum onto the tip of the nipple you are able to scoop it up and the cool thing is that your pinky is perfect for the job. You're able to just do a little scoop and then put it in their mouth. Scoop put it in their mouth so just express the colostrum scoop and feed it to them that way and it only takes drops so you don't have to worry about the fact that you're doing such a small amount you know maybe when it spreads out on your finger you can't even see it anymore doesn't matter the contents are still there baby when it gets into their mouth it's going to be absorbed you know the tongues the cheek the mouth is working to get all of that stuff off your finger so don't worry about it. little bit by little bit it does the job and one more for you this was the tool that i ended up using i was really glad i knew about the idea ahead of time because yeah we had some problems latching my son was hilarious. He must have been like this in the womb because that's all he wanted to do. 
was have his hands over his face. It meant that every time he tried to latch, he'd be like, I'm really hungry. And then he'd start losing his mind because he couldn't latch because his hand was in the way. So we had to figure out not only how to latch, but I had to figure out how to keep his hand away from his face, which always just had to be up there. Okay, whatever it is that you're working with. Um, this tool made my life easier. What I did was instead of doing it drop by drop, um, feeding him with my finger or putting him on the breast, I did some squeezing and put him on the breast. But I used this the most. What I did was I would squeeze and collect the colostrum. So all you have to do is go to your local pharmacy and ask for some syringes. Clarify, you don't want the ones with the needles. Okay, and they would ask you questions anyways. You want the ones with no needles in 10 cc's or 10 milliliters i found that this was the largest one that i would want to use so this or a smaller size is perfect when you start getting bigger than that it just makes it a little harder to manage um, also because you're working with such small amounts of fluid yeah if you have a big one then it looks like this tiny little drop it's discouraging it doesn't help so 10 cc's or smaller is a great way to go that way I was able to work, you know, on my own with baby, you know, resting beside me. I was able to get the colostrum collected and just see the end of the syringe, you know, had it all there. And then I was able to pick up my baby, cuddle with them. We had that snuggle time. I didn't have to keep moving them out of the way because I was trying to manipulate my breast. No, all that work was already done so I could hold them and I could just gently feed him that liquid. It was great to be able to see how much was getting into him. Just, it was a great visual for me as a new mom. Okay, no, I know he's gotten a chickpea <laughs> worth of food. I saw it go in. Um, and to go along with that, just if you take a look at the size of the tip there, it was really easy to get into his mouth. Um, it was a comfortable size for him. And if he just sort of had his mouth even hanging open a little bit, it was easy to put a gentle drop on the tip of his lip to roll into his mouth. Um, so it wasn't overwhelming for him. And speaking of overwhelming, it just means if you do choose to use a syringe, you're gonna have to be that little extra bit careful that you don't accidentally <clears throat> squirt it into their face. You don't wanna shoot food into them. Um, so just be careful about that. Um, but otherwise, again, this is still part of you and baby figuring each other out. You'll get it down. It just takes a little bit of practice. Um, I ended up getting, I think about six or seven of these. And what I would do is I would use it, set it aside, use it, set it aside. When I'd gone through my collection, then I would run them through the sink with soap and water and then boil them. And these things handle being boiled just fine. So I would boil it and then I would put them back to, you know, this is my clean set to work with. And as I needed them, I would grab them. So, um, I found that really handy just so I didn't have to rely on washing and boiling only one. Um, it just saved me time that I could go through a bundle of them, do a big batch of cleaning, and then just be set for the next multiple rounds of feeding. Um, so in the end, what's going to be most helpful? Hand expression, for sure. And then peace and calm, just knowing that your finger is a great way to feed your baby, getting the colostrum into their body. <clears throat> and a syringe is a great tool if you want to be able to collect larger amounts of it and feed all in one go. So I hope that gives you some peace and calm in those first few days. <clears throat> and just enjoy getting to know each other. Enjoy figuring out the journey. Um, it's beautiful and it's awkward and it's exciting and challenging and scary and frustrating. Just so many beautiful things all mixed into one. Um, give yourself some space and if anybody comes along and puts pressure on you of, well, how about we give them formula or how about we give them this or how about you do that or how, if it's not the right fit for what you want for your family, it's okay to say, we need a little bit more space. We're figuring it out. It's going to be okay. Thanks. And so hopefully those tools do help you and support your goals. All the best. Bye.